Today's video, we are going to be switching from a one piece drive shaft to a custom built two piece drive shaft in the S10 here. Uh, so, we're going to go over how I measured to get the custom drive shaft ordered, how I'm going to install it, set it up, and then the up and down sides of a one piece versus a two piece drive shaft. And uh, hopefully, at the end of this video, we will have a ton more ground clearance for the drive shaft of this S10. Now, I have had this S10 completed with this one piece drive shaft built for it for almost two years now. And in that two years, I have bent this one piece drive shaft three times. Now, the first time I bent it was in four dice. We did the Rubicon and then four dice in California. Luckily, Nate and I trailered our rigs down there because we knew we were gonna kinda do some more difficult trails. Now, I dented it the second time on the Washington Rocklander route. Now, uh, this is a picture of me denting it right here. And again, I could drive it still about 60 miles an hour without it being too crazy. So that wasn't too bad. I was able to finish the whole trip, drive it home, and then I got it retubed for the second time. And then the third time was on the Rubicon. The last time I did the Rubicon this last summer, I dented it and I could drive about 63 to 65 miles an hour. Uh, so I was able to drive all the way back home from California to Washington without an issue. Now, if I had just built the two piece drive shaft to begin with and not had this retubed two different times, I would have saved myself probably $800 in the long run. But at the time when I was building this truck, I didn't have the money uh, in the budget to build a two piece drive shaft. So uh, in a pinch, I just had it fixed because I needed the truck and I didn't want to deal with building a cross member and doing all the things that we're doing in today's video. So the downsides, obviously the cost, more than double or about double depending on where you get it made, how it's made and components, all that stuff. The second downside is it's a little bit more complicated to set up a two piece drive shaft versus a one piece drive shaft. You have a carrier bearing, you have multiple shafts that you have to deal with different angles and figuring that out. So it is a little bit more complicated. And also in some cases there could be a less down travel type situation because that second piece of the drive shaft is now much shorter. Now I'd say probably the only upside to a one piece drive shaft is the most important for us off-road guys, is more ground clearance. Now clearly I need it because I've dented this thing three times already and I need more clearance under the truck, uh, that breakover angle before I hit those rear tires. I just have to have it because I actually rock crawl and do real trails with this truck. I have to have a two piece drive shaft and get more clearance because I'm just gonna keep denting this drive shaft Basically, every other time I go out, it's going to cost me a ton of money. I'm going to get stuck somewhere with a bent drive shaft and uh, get stuck with a tow bill and all that stuff. And it's way more cost effective to just fix this right now, get that extra clearance uh, that I need, and move on with other things in the truck. This is the diagram that I made uh, after taking all my measurements that I sent to Adam's drive shaft in order to have this thing made. So you're gonna wanna measure from the output of your transfer case, in this case, the a 1350 flange, to uh, where I want my center carrier bearing support to be. Now, in order to do that, I had to get creative. I used a ratchet strap across the frame to kind of uh, simulate generally where I wanted this carrier bearing, center support bearing to be. So I measured from there to the flange. That's where I got my 34 inches of that measurement right there. From that, I need a double cardin 1350 back down to my Ford nine inch with a slip on it. So you can see here, I have a measurement from the same spot, which is why I used that ratchet strap. So I had was measuring from the exact same spot from that ratchet strap back to the center of my U-joint on my Ford 9-inch. And that measure, measurement is that 29.5. So we got all of our new and old drive shaft parts, uh, cross member parts that we're gonna be building. So this is the current drive shaft, the one piece. So we have a double cardin 1350 on one side. And then you can see our rock hits right here where it spins around. This is where it's dented all the way up here. I have some marks way up here on the drive shaft here, here, all the way down. This is not as bad as 
the last two times. So this is the new drive shaft setup from Adam's drive shaft. Uh, instead of a double card in here, we don't need one because there'll be no flexing uh, of the drive shaft uh, because this will be a set fixed piece. So we got our 1350 single joint here and then we have our carrier bearing and then this will be where our rear drive shaft part attaches. So this right here is the mount where I'm gonna have to build our cross member across the frame to mount this side right here. And then this is the second piece. This is the actual working piece. This is a 1350 double cardan, same as this guy right here. And then we have a 1350 slip right here. You can buy a cross member kit from Barnes four wheel drive. It's like 45 bucks, but uh, they're out of stock currently. A win out, as of the making of this video, out of stock. Couldn't get them right now. Uh, other brands are 15 day lead times and I need this like this week right now. So this is a piece of tube that I cut out of the TJ. This is a rear, uh, this is a, I forgot, uh, rear cage part that I cut out when I redid the cage. So this is part of the roll cage that I cut out. It already has a bend in it, which I'm gonna need uh, for going around the gas tank. I'll show you that later. And these are $15 bushings and sleeves from Amazon, 15, 15 bucks for that, for the bushings. And then this is just tube that I had laying around, I cut to fit. These are some Barnes four wheel drive shock tabs that I cut the center out and made mounting tabs here. And these are bolts that I found laying around. So uh, this is gonna mount to the frame. And then these guys right here is gonna go on here for the cross member. And then I'm gonna have to build a plate on here to mount the carrier bearing on. So as of right now, besides the drive shaft, building the cross member, I am uh, in it $15 and about 30 minutes of work to build these two pieces and uh, these tabs right here. First thing I'm doing is I'm taking a plumb bob tape measure and a red paint pen and I'm finding the center of the frame of the truck. It's kind of dark, but transfer case output, you can see that it is not center of the truck. It is sitting about a half an inch to the passenger side. So we've got our laser pointed towards the rear now, and we got an inch and a half towards the path. Oh, my hands in the way of the laser there. Uh, inch and a half towards the passenger side. So the output of the transfer case goes towards the passenger side and it's hard to tell, but the, the tunnel built into the body of the truck, the gas tanks in the way. So you can, I, I'm going to have to angle it towards the passenger side slightly in order to get it where I want it to be. So we need to calculate the difference between this yoke, the output of the transfer case, and then this yoke right here, the actual drive line itself. So what I did is I zero my angle finder out on top of the yoke off the transfer case, zero it, and then move it to my drive shaft tube right here. And I have about 2.5 degrees. So it's not zero, not three. Three is kind of the max working angle. Once you get more than three degrees, you're gonna start wearing out your U-joint a little bit more uh, quickly than you would want to. So we are under three now, and I actually, we were like four something before, and uh, I made a quick shim. So I shimmed my transfer case up just slightly, which gave me an extra degree on my output right here. This yoke was already almost touching this cross member anyways. So shimming it up just a tiny bit is gonna help right there. So we got this angle exactly where I want it uh, within specs that I'm happy with. And then trying to figure out with the laser exactly where uh, I'm gonna put this guy right here. So the height is good, uh, left and right. I know this is the center and I know the rear pinion diff is an inch and a half. The center of my yoke right there is an inch and a half to the left towards the passenger side. So I have this set up exactly inch and a half. So right now this is angled slightly passenger side. I gotta set up this cross member tube piece and our brackets and see where we're at there.
Time to fire up the old Harbor Freight welder. Actually have just checked, have not turned this on in 10 months. See if it still turns on. Yep, still works. Turn our gas on back here. I don't know if I have enough gas. I shouldn't need a lot for this project. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, we're good. Here's a cross member completely done, painted, welded up. These two pieces were quarter inch because I didn't have any 3 16 that were long enough to do these two pieces right here. So they're quarter inch, way overkill, which is why I only welded three spots on each piece here. Welding all the way down is just way overkill, not needed for something like this. And then I used our cardboard cutouts to make these little side pieces right here and then cut them out. I was actually able to find all the bolts that I'm gonna to need to bolt the drive line in, to bolt this cross member in, and to bolt the uh, drive line, the carrier bearing. So the only thing I spent money on on this was the bushing. Otherwise, everything here is scrap metal uh, that I found laying in the garage. So I'm total into this $15. So the next step is getting our pinion angle correct. Our pinion angle is pretty bad right here. So we want this to be completely straight to this shaft right here. So I'm setting this up as if it is a one piece drive shaft because this front section is fixed. So this is one section totally separate from this section right here. So once this is bolted here, this is now just a one piece drive shaft as far as setting it up. Our pinion angle now here is pretty much perfect. It's within 0.3, it's actually 0.3 down compared to this, which basically with the, uh, the error factor of this thing, it's basically zero. So uh, you can see I had to adjust out this upper one a lot and I adjusted in my lower ones actually as much as I could. I can't actually adjust them in anymore. And it's gonna be hard to tell, but the coil springs, my bump stops and everything in the back is now, the whole rear axle is tilted back way more than I ever intended it because I did not weld all of my brackets and everything on to accommodate this, the angle of this two piece drive shaft, uh, but way more clearance underneath here. Um, so that's good. I checked here, so these enduro joints from Barnes four wheel drive, you can see how much thread is on here. So we have probably more than half thread is still inside of this tube right here. So I'm not worried about uh, going too far on this, on the threads on this, because this has a ton of threads in it. I do need to check to make sure at full droop, uh, it doesn't bind up. And then also I need to flex the suspension up and down to make sure that the coil springs and everything is gonna be okay and not bind on itself. And then I will take all of my final measurements and I'll show you exactly how much 
extra clearance I've gained from installing this two-piece drive shaft. Uh, your drive line's much better now than it's two piece. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's biting. It's biting. The STT Pro doing work. Let's take a look at exactly how much extra ground clearance we got with this two-piece dry shaft. I took the measurements at all the spots that I had previously hit my one-piece dry shaft at 14 inches, 20 inches, and all the way up at 26 inches up the dry shaft. Basically across the whole board uh, where I need it the most, I have five extra inches of ground clearance, which is absolutely huge. Currently cruising about 80 miles an hour driving through the middle of Oregon, beautiful by the Columbia River, uh, on our way to Moab and Easter Jeep Safari, and the drive line is absolutely beautiful. It's perfect, no vibration. We have successfully made it back from Moab. Truck is in one piece. Everything went really well. We had a great time. The drive line did amazing. There is a ton of obstacles that I 100% would have absolutely destroyed that one piece drive line on. Just there's no way it would have made it without it. Anyways, guys, big shout out to Adam's Drive Shaft for the custom two piece drive shaft for this truck. Make sure you check them out if you guys need a drive shaft. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, we will see you guys in the next one.